Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome, welcome to today's lecture. Today actually what we are going to study is different tools and techniques. Okay. Tools and techniques used in immune, immune, study immunology or the different techniques which is also known as immunotechnics that we will discuss today. This uh, lecture actually uh, we thought to give today for two main reason. One is um, the tools and techniques that we are going to discuss that will help to understand the uh, many experiment that we are going to discuss uh, in future classes. So, you can understand better if you know what are the techniques. If I tell that just the name okay, immunolocalization, you may not understand what is uh, that mean or what is the outcome of that. So, that is why we uh, I decided to discuss few techniques to understand the immune system better number one and number two I am sure by now so many days just you are listening T cell, B cell, MHC 1, MHC 2, T cell receptor, B cell receptor, macrophage, dendritic cell. So, you uh, kind of uh, monotonous lecture uh, one after another that continuously you are discussing definitely you are that is our main goal. But before that, if we understand few techniques or how this antigen antibody uh, we determine, if you remember like the primary response as negative response, we showed uh, you a graph, right. So, at the very beginning there was no uh, antibody and then it is increasing. So, how this graph is made because somebody need to measure the amount of antibody, how much antibody is there in the serum or if you remember the table where we saw that what is the amount of different isotypes of antibody uh, in uh, serum like how much milligram is there. So, how we get that information? So, to understand that, so we need to know few techniques. So, today what we are going to do? We are going to discuss some tools and techniques that uh, we uh, go, uh, normally use to study immunology. And one more important thing is that the techniques that we are going to discuss in next uh, 4 5 lectures um, different techniques. This is not restricted to immune system only because immuno techniques are very popular. I mean you uh, believe me that very very popular to study any um, almost most of the branch of uh, biology or, or life science like uh, microbiology, molecular biology, proteins, cell biology these are used everywhere okay because using these techniques we can understand many things we uh, that you learn with uh, with time and uh, this is one important thing that these techniques are used almost every branches of life science and second is these techniques most of the time most of the time is very very cheap okay you don't need too high fi instrument uh, or equipments or costly equipments you do not need much expertise, but definitely you have to uh, do the experiment by yourself to know the tidbits, but we are not going to go detail about the technique. Mostly what we are going to do is try to understand the principle of the uh, techniques or tools and what information we can get and how it looks like whether it is a number or it is a photograph or it is something else. So, these we are going to discuss. Okay. So, the first definition wise immunotechnics are you can say any techniques which use antibody for one of as one of the reagents then it is uh, we call immunotechnics. So, any techniques we use antibody as one of the major reagents or most important reagents we call it immunotechnics. Okay. So, let us start. So, today is like I mean it is lecture 26 it is a tool and techniques. Okay. So, first what we are going to do is we are going to discuss uh, immuno te uh, techniques and one of the major reagents of these techniques should be antibody. Okay. You know that 
antibody we write like A B in short and antigen we write A G in short. So, antibody and antigen we are going to use A B and A G very frequently clear. So, now the first thing if you would like to find antibody what you need you need antigen you need antigen and if you are studying any particular antigen specifically first thing what we should have in our hand is pure antigen ok. We should have pure antigen and most of the time what is this pure antigen? Pure antigen is that means, you have to have a pure protein in your hand ok. So, pure protein means you have to purify the protein that source of protein may be na uh, natural source like from say if you want to purify protein from cell you can extract that total protein from cell and purify your protein of interest. I am not going to go all these um, details how you will get the protein because it is a uh, lot of class you need to discuss just or you can uh, uh, express the protein in recombinant way right and then purify your recombinant protein of your uh, protein of interest like you clone the gene express the protein you can express the protein in bacteria you can express the protein in yeast the baculovirus system animal cell plant cell whatever the uh, original source of the protein whether it is a recombinant or na uh, native source you have to purify the protein. Protein purification there are several techniques you can go for affinity purification you can ion exchange chromatography and uh, then uh, you can uh, purify by immunoprecipitation that we will come and discuss what is this immunoprecipitation. Is. So, uh, then uh, the, your protein is your hand and you have to raise the antibody ok. So, normally what we do to raise the antibody because one, one of the reagent of immunotechnics is antigen. If you are looking for antibody or major antibody detect antibody then you need pure antigen in your hand that is your bait. So, antibody will bind and you can measure that the antibody part or if you would like to characterize the antigen or purify the antigen or do some um, localization of the antigen. So, then what you have to do you need antibody in your hand ok. So, in it is general. So, if you need to characterize or know about the antigen you need antibody. If you want to know anything about the antibody then you need antigen. So, antigen you have to have by purification expression by in recombinant system uh, there are several methods right. So, I am not going assume that I have pure antigen in my hand. So, if I have pure antigen in my hand what I have to do to raise antibody? Normal practices we inject that antigen into animal ok. So, you can use the mouse, you can use rabbit, you can use goat, monkey horse depending on how much antigen you uh, antibody you want. If your requirement is very little you can use small animal, if your requirement is very high you can use big animal and if you use big animal there is one more factor is there. If you use big animal then you need more amount of pure antigen right. So, antigen purification or pure protein in your hand pure means pure to homogeneity that means no other protein contaminant should be there because if you inject two protein into animal antibody will be raised against two proteins, but if I would like to work with one protein that should be very very pure ok that should be in, uh, in our uh, hand. So, pure protein means pure to homogeneity nothing else is there. So, if you want to use big animal you have to have good amount of pure protein and that is not always easy because having pure protein in good or large amount is one of the key factor to raise antibody. So, in laboratory purpose what we do is most of the time if it is not a commercial uh, requirement in laboratory purpose we do not need that much ok. So, mostly we use rabbit, rabbit is fine ok or mouse. So, you have pure antigen in your hand. So, pure antigen you have to inject into animal ok. So, you have to inject into animal and so that injection what we will do that injection 
that antigen will you have to administer into animal different way. Many of you know I am not going to uh, discuss about detail of it why and when, but there are many ways you can administer you can do intramuscular, intravenous, intraperitoneal, subcutaneous, oral. Okay. So, normally we do intramuscular in laboratory practice for raising antibody and that we will discuss little more detail about this in um, vaccine production or uh, during that okay, what is vaccine, how you can produce or how you can therapy. So, if you inject the antigen and what will happen you remember this uh, I am sure that you remember this graph. Okay. So, initially few days you will not see anything then it will increase then go come down then what we will do is to raise more and good quality antibody we in, will inject again antibody in the same animal twice say maybe after 3 weeks of first injection we will do the first booster and what will happen you know that it will reach maximum good amount good quality and IgG type right. So, this will continue. So, if you need more again you inject again because it is already primed okay. at this stage. So, when this first booster dose what we do is we isolate or take some blood. Okay. We isolate the blood and from that blood we purify the serum. Okay. We purify serum. How you get the serum? You know difference between serum and plasma right? I am sure you know. So, plasma is I am repeating again plasma is if you isolate the blood just centrifuge immediately in presence of say um, anticoagulant what will happen all the blood cells like WBC, RBC all these uh, will precipitate and then you will find a liquid part or fluid part at the su as supernatant. So, that supernatant still contains the clotting factors. So, what will happen if you keep that fluid it will clot. So, this is plasma, but if I isolate the blood and after isolation of the blood if you allow them to stay say normally what we do is we keep it 37 degree centigrade say for 1 hour. Okay. After that what will happen most of the blood will clot right? and even after clotting some fluid will still there that is actually serum. So, after 37 we keep it 4 degree uh, overnight 4 degree centigrade overnight okay. and then next day we just collect the uh, very uh, 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 centrifuge the cells and slowly without disturbing much because if you disturb it then uh, RBC will lies and it will take a unnecessary red color. You can avoid that by uh, handling gently. So, that 4 degree then you centrifuge and collect the fluid that is serum. So, what happened all the clotting factor you know that uh, that will be separated by that. So, this serum actually contain this serum contains the antibody and this antibody we can purify and this antibody we can use directly the serum can be used for different techniques or in some cases where we need very good quality antibody or some techniques need pure antibody. So, because serum contains what serum any serum you take from the bovine, rabbit, human you know the major constituents of the serum is what major constituent of the serum is the albumin serum albumin. So, it if there are too much serum albumin that may mask the uh, antibody molecule. So, some many times what we do we purify the antibody from that serum. Okay. So, I am not going detail here at this moment, but uh, we can purify the antibody just by affinity chromatography those who are interested go and uh, read that affinity purification of antibody using protein A. Okay. Protein A affinity purification is normally used to purify IgG. Okay. So, that way what you can do from the serum only IgG you can separate. So, now after this in, in thing is done, so it will take time because you need a pure protein then inject you have to wait 2 to 3 months and then after that you isolate the uh, draw the blood then you isolate the serum and you test because we are not going to kill the animal. Okay, animal will still survive we have not 
killing or sacrificing the animal to get all the blood. So, keeping the animal alive or alive, we isolate some or draw some amount of blood from there, we isolate serum and that serum will contain antibody, antibody against what antibody against of that pure antigen that you injected protein of interest that pro antibody you can purify using protein A. So, now this is your reagent to study. Okay. Now, this is your reagent to study. So, what we will do with this? So, now if I say that okay, this antigen you purified is not good. So, that is not going to work better. So, how do you check what is this uh, antibody is good or bad or is at all antibody is produced or not because many times what happen your antigen may not be good. Antigen may not be good means it may not have any B cell epitope. If there is no B cell epitope no antibody, if there is no T cell epitope no antibody. So, normally it is very rare cases that there is no B cell epitope or no T cell epitope if the protein Generally, uh, rule of thumb is if the protein molecular weight is more than 5 kilo Dalton, normally it is act as um, immunogen. You remember hope, I hope that uh, you remember what is antigen and immunogen. Okay, I will repeating again. Antigen is the molecule to which antibody can bind. It can be anything, antibody can bind is antigen. But if antigen you inject into animal, if it can elicit immune response that is called immunogen. That means, any antigen can elicit immune response is antigen, uh, sorry is immunogen. That means, what all immunogens are antigen, but some antigen may not be immunogen. That means, antibody can bind, but it cannot elicit immune response. So, in that kind of thing non immunogenic antigen if you inject into animal then it will not raise any antibody, but you can um, uh, check that normally it is not that uh, common. So, normally most of the proteins are immunogenic. So, they are uh, good enough to raise the antibody in animal, but still we have to check how good the antibody is right. So, what we do is the one of the very simple test is immunodiffusion. Very simple test is immunodiffusion. What we do there? In immunodiffusion there are single immunodiffusion or double immunodiffusion. Okay, two thing is possible. Okay. So, for that what we will explain is for immunoprecipitation uh, sorry immunodiffusion that means, what is happening in this here in immunodiffusion I will show this picture I will uh, uh, just listen to me first. So, uh, I will explain this whatever you are seeing I will explain this why uh, this, uh, this is here. So, in immunodiffusion what we see is if antigen and antibody binds or react okay, they will precipitate and we can see a very a nice precipitation line or precipitin line. Okay. So, if you see any precipitation that means antibody is there. Okay. So, what is happening you can titrate also agglutination or uh, blood group test it is just the precipitation or agglutination kind of thing. So, what we can do is suppose this is uh, I am seeing a graph assuming that we can see uh, the precipitation we can see. Now, in a tube okay, in a tube you take a solution where lots of antibody is there. Okay. Uh, this is antibody solution. So, huge amount of antibody is there. Okay. Then you are drop wise you are drop wise you are adding antigen. Okay. So, initially what happened initially your concentration of antigen if you, this is the antigen concentration you are adding. So, amount of antibody is fixed you are drop wise adding antigen. So, initially antigen concentration at the very beginning it is 0 and then gradually it is increasing. Okay. It is increasing. So, if I draw this way it is the amount is increasing in uh, 
amma i mean the antigen concentration is increasing so what we will see is initially there is no precipitation at the big middle there will be a precipitation so this is the amount of precipitation i am drawing okay there you you will see the you will see the precipitation again it will not so what we will see if you keep on adding the solution is clear 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 and suddenly you see some cloudy precipitation is happening and then cloudiness is increasing then if you keep on adding then again that cloudiness will be cleared okay and this region that where you are going to see the cloudiness how you can measure that cloudiness you can measure the cloudiness by simple spectrophotometer so if i measure by od okay so the turbidity will increase and if the turbidity increase you can see that uh, od is increasing so od will increase then again going down back to the minimum one right this region where you see the precipitation or you see the um, cloudiness is called zone of equivalence zone of equivalence why initially there was no precipitation initial what was the condition you know that i already told that antigen antibody interaction is not a co uh, covalent interaction it is a non covalent interaction. So, they, there is due depending on the affinity they bind and open bind and open it is a continuous process. If a high affinity the after binding it will remain for a long time if it is low affinity it will bind after some time it will open and it will find another molecule of antigen it will bind there open another bind there. So, it is they will continuously exchange and there will be an equilibrium. So, at the early stage when there are huge amount of antibody. So, antibody amount is very high what will happen in when the antibody amount is very high condition is assumed like this. That means, too many antibody molecule only few this red are antigen and blue is the antibody. Okay. So, too many antibodies, but very few antigen molecules are there. So, they will make like this. So, individually they will find so there will be no because to uh, precipitate something it should be little bit heavier or make a bigger complex so that it pull down. Okay, so, as long as this is there you will not see any I mean as long as this is there okay, so um, the, that time you will not see any um, precipitation, but if you keep on adding there will be a time where they will find this or this kind of structure. So, it is just the, uh, the ratio of antigen and antibody is such. So, they will make a nice kind of structure or bigger structure. So, 4 antibody 4 um, antigen 3 antibody 3 antigen they will make bigger structure you have you, you might have seen much better picture in when I was showing you the slide same slide I mean similar structure. So, when they make this big structure then they cannot stay in the solution anymore they will precipitate clear. Now, if this region or this concentration or this ratio will reach at certain point. Say, so, maybe this is the region where this kind of structure, this kind of structure are formed. Again, if one keep on continuing the antigen, so you are you saw the uh, antibody and keep on using adding uh, keep on adding the antigen, what will happen? In that case, this is the scenario where antigen number is much more than your antibody. Again what will happen antibody will be diluted and you will not have this kind of structure. If there is not this kind of structure or this kind of structure will break and that will be diluted. So, you will have this kind of distribution you will again you will lose the precipitation. So, at a particular dilution or particular ratio of antigen and antibody will form this kind of structure only then it will precipitate. This is whatever I am talking this is whatever I am discussing right now it is I am talking about the uh, uh, antigen antibody reaction in solution, but here you cannot see the precipitation line right. So, that is why the technique immuno precipitation that we are uh, using. Okay. So, in immuno diffusion what is happening there are single or radial immunodiffusion 
and another is double immunodiffusion. Single immunodiffusion what we do is you know all of you know the agar plate. Okay. So, you make a 2 percent agar solution and may, uh, put on a slide or in a petri plate. Okay. So, you have you have a uh, sorry you have a uh, glass plate so, uh, so assume and then you put some 2 percent or 1.8 percent agar. Okay. Normally, we are using agar rows okay, not agar that we are going using in bacteria now 2 percent agar solution we add. So, it is the uh, in one slide. So, it is not one dimensional or what we can do is we can use the petri plate I am sure all of you know what is petri plate is where you grow the bacteria and that petri plate you pour the agar how, how thick may be say 3 to 4 millimeter thickness and then you make hole okay, different holes just punch a uh, glass, um, glass um, pipe or pass through pipette kind of thing and make a hole or well kind of thing. So, while you are pouring this agarose what you can do is you can mix your antibody. So, that means what happened your antibody is everywhere your antibody your antibody is everywhere. Okay. So, if, if this is a um, um, say plate suppose this is the antibody is everywhere okay. this is your antibody it is everywhere you cannot see that definitely you cannot see that okay, because it is not visible, but in this hole okay, in this hole or well now you add antigen. Okay, antigen solution that pure antigen solution pure antigen you have you pour antigen. So, what will happen if there is now I am drawing this again like this and there is a hole here M antibody is everywhere equal concentration and you are putting antigen here you are putting antigen here and this antigen what will happen with time it will diffuse right it will diffuse and it will diffuse sidewise red uh, I mean according to radiation it will diffuse. So, while it will diffuse in different direction okay, antigen has a particular concentration okay, while it will diffuse. So, at the very close to the well suppose this is a well full of antigen very close to the well the antigen concentration is very high and more it go it will be diluted. So, at a particular concentration while it is diluting at a particular concentration what will happen it will reach that equivalent zone of equivalence that means, the ratio will be perfect to make precipitate that will be perfect to make precipitate. Then what we will see we will see I mean this is the uh, thing. So, what we will see this is a nice circular petri plate okay. this is a nice circular petri plate let me take this little this side this is a nice circular petri plate and you have a well which you will not see anything because all neither antigen nor antibody is colored. So, what we will see and the next day if you keep this plate overnight at 15 degree centigrade why you keep in 15 degree centigrade diffusion rate is high in a high temperature we keep it 15 degree centigrade because less chance of contamination because bacteria may grow in the agar. So, that we would like to avoid that and diffusion will be little slower. So, pre, uh, chance of formation of precipitate is more. So, what will happen you will see a very I am drawing the yellow it is actually is very faint milky white. So, you will see very nice ring okay. you will see a very nice ring. So, next morning you come you see against the light you take the light against the light you see a very nice faint um, milky white ring if ring is there if ring is there that means antibody is there because what you did you t isolate the serum mix with the agar agarose and plate it and you you know antigen is there because you have purified antigen you use it before but antibody is there or not you did not know if you see the precipitation line then or a very nice circle that means antibody is there 
So, if this is the case, what is the advantage? You do not need any instrument except one petri plate and little bit agarose. You can tell whether antibody is there or not. Okay. So, and this thing you cannot, I mean, you well, you can tell that how what is the amount is um, of antibodies good or bad, but normally we do not do use this, we use double diffusion. What is there in the double diffusion? We in double diffusion, same petri plate. Okay. Let me use this. So, so, in the same petri plate, what we do is we make multiple hole. Okay. Multiple hole means there is one hole in the center, then radially we will put dif make different hole in better is uniform distance is better if you can punch it. Okay. In the center, in the center hole we add antibody and in different hole you can do either way. Okay. In the center suppose in the center you add antigen either way is possible. Okay. So, in center you add antibody and in different hole you use antigen of different concentration. Suppose, this is A x, this is 2 x amount, then 3 x amount and then 4 x amount and then 5 x amount. This amount x amount, 2 x amount whatever may be 2 microgram, 1 microgram that you can measure. So, and you do the same thing what will happen antibody will diffuse all direction equally. Same way if the antigen color if I make red okay, that will also diffuse in all direction in all from all well right. So, what will happen for each case there will be a precipitation line right. So, if you have less amount of antigen it will dilute it very quickly. If you have more amount of antigen it will be diluted I mean in, in comparison to x 5 x what will happen the dilution will be much less in comparison to x. So, if I now draw or if I, if I now make one well here where we put antibody here and one well here antigen another well antigen same amount if I give. What we will see at a particular distance from this well we will see a precipitation line same distance I will see a precipitation line. So, next morning I will see a nice faint milky white or good milky white precipitation line here. So, if the amount of antigen if this is antigen and here is antibody are same. So, say suppose 2 microgram 2 microgram serum I do not know okay. and if I give double amount of antigen here what will happen double amount of antigen means double amount of antigen means this will be uh, if this is say 2 x amount this is x amount where it will form because if this is x if this is the proper dilution that dilution will reach little far okay, because it will dilute more. So, instead of like we will get this it will be closer to this antibody well. Okay. Same way we can just do same way we can just do same way we can just do in center we can keep antigen and the serum we isolate we gave say x amount we gave 2 x amount then 3 x amount then 4 x amount or we cannot increase the, what we will do this is undiluted. Okay. Then you diluted 0.2 times then 0 0.3 0 0.4 you dilute. So, one is directly the serum then you direct half 
So, let me put this way half then then one fourth x then one eighth x what will happen more you diluting the antibody the amount of antibody is less ok and here suppose you give one by sixteenth dilution of serum. So, x will give you a better precipitation line and gradually the antibody is diluted you will see the line are getting faint and faint and one sixteenth you may not get anything. So, what this will tell? This will tell suppose you get a very faint precipitation line even in 1 50th 1 by 50 dilution is also giving you precipitation line that means what? That means your antibody amount in the serum is very good because even you diluted 50 times still you are getting precipitation line. Okay. So, this way double diffusion can give you an idea how good your antibody amount and definitely whether antibody is produced or not you can figure it out right. This is called Octarloni double diffusion method Octarloni double diffusion method. So, you just type in the net immunodiffusion and search for picture you will you will get variety of picture variety of this kind of drawing much better because this is drawn on scale and compass and uh, using and there are some real life picture and you have an idea what is immunodiffusion is. Okay. So, thank you for today or this lecture in next lecture we are going to discuss another technique till then bye.